what's happening everybody? <laughs> Get out of here. Sorry that I missed last week's video. I'm actually kind of bummed that I broke the streak because that's the most consistent that I've been on this channel in a very long time. I think I went like two and a half months or something like that without missing a video. Unbelievable, but I was sick. What can you do? That's the first time that I've been sick in like three years or something like that. Still kind of lingering a little bit, but we're getting back to work today anyways. Of course, we are getting back on the shop build today and Again, we've got more new equipment showing up today. It seems like that has been never ending lately. And I really have nothing to be mad about there. That's awesome. There are two new pieces showing up at some point today, but before that can even happen, I have to clear a path just for that truck to be able to get near the door. So let's get this video started Canada style. Dude, it is bananas out here. We're getting some snow. Ugh, I think you can figure out what's in these boxes now, but I can't open these just yet. There is plumbing and electrical stuff going on in here all over the place. That shit needs to get done and I don't want to get in these guys' way. So I'm gonna deal with these tomorrow. Before I head out to the shop today, I actually have a pretty cool little announcement to make. I want a screen printing award. This is the Rising Star Award from Screen Printing Magazine. They give this thing out to five or six people every year who are doing cool things throughout the industry and fuck yeah, I got one. I gotta say, it's pretty cool to get some industry recognition for what we've got going on around here. I really think we're building something special with this business, with this channel, with all of it. And it's also really cool that there was an actual trophy to go with this thing. When they told me that I won, I was like, oh shit, yeah, that's amazing. And didn't really expect anything more. But then they asked for my address to send the award to and I was like, no way. I haven't done anything worth winning a trophy for since I was riding for a living and that was 10 or 12 years ago or something like that. So. It's pretty cool to get some fresh hardware in here. So big thanks to Screen Printing Magazine for choosing me to be one of the winners this year. Really cool. And even bigger thanks to Ryan Moore. He's who nominated me to win this award. And those of you who know who Ryan is, he's the OG. He's somebody who I greatly respect and admire and look up to in the industry. So the nomination coming from him really means a lot. They also interviewed me after winning this award and I'm pretty sure there's some good stuff in there. So if you wanna check that out, I linked it down in the description below for you. And while you're there, check out the other winners too. They're all doing some pretty cool stuff in the industry. Congratulations to everyone else who won this award. Go team. And man, now that I know that there's industry awards like this, which I found out there's actually quite a few, I want more of them. I want all of them. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm the most competitive person ever. So no matter how long it takes, I'm coming for you. Anyways, let's go to the shop and unbox some cool stuff. I am not sure how I'm gonna make this work right now because if you have a look in here, <laughs> there's kind of stuff everywhere. That's simply because of all the work that's been going on in here if you have a look. We got electrical going in here. We got the phase converter up. It's not hooked up yet, but it's up there. Big ass disconnects on the wall. There's so much cool electrical stuff going in here. It's awesome. There's also all the plumbing and airline work that's going on in here. Look at that maze of pipes right there. I'm actually kind of pumped that I have to have external plumbing in this place because that looks pretty cool. All of those dudes still aren't done yet. They've got at least another five, six days in here for sure. And they've got tools and supplies all over the place, which I mean, I can't really do anything about that. They need that stuff. I've also finished unboxing the auto. So we've got print heads and pallet arms and things just taking up all kinds of floor space right now in the shop. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna go about opening these up just yet. I think what I'm gonna have to do is just rearrange, move everything in this shop somewhere else and clear a space to open up those crates. I haven't even started in this new shop yet and I already need a bigger one. Unbelievable. We've got a full DTG setup. Polyprint has come on board to partner with myself, the channel, and the shop so that we can make some high quality DTG content for YouTube, which to be quite frank, I think is needed. <laughs> really stoked and grateful to have those guys on board. I've been talking with their main crew over in Greece a whole bunch and we're definitely on the same page with a lot of stuff. So really cool people over there and they have hooked us up with a whole bunch of awesome stuff. We've got the flagship TextJet Echo 2 printer in here. We've got the Pre-Treater Pro. There's a DTF kit in there, which that's definitely gonna get interesting. There's equipment stands, there's supplies, there's all kinds of awesome stuff 
in this pile. And because I'm impatient like a giant child, we're gonna unbox it all right now. These things are so cool. I don't wanna give away too much just yet because I wanna make a sexy little B-roll montage for you guys. But before I can do that, I need to recruit some help because these things are heavy as shit and there's no way I'm lifting them onto those carts by myself. I think the printer is like 200 pounds and the pre-treater is like 230, 240. So yeah, I need another person here. I've gone about as far as I can tonight, so I'm gonna have to continue this on tomorrow. I'm getting started a little bit late in the day, but I managed to recruit some help to lift these machines. Okay, what do we need to do here? I hope you're feeling strong today, because these are just things you fucking handle. Ah. I still have old man strength. I don't know what it is. I'm getting old enough to have old man strength. Jesus Christ. Oh. Are you good with me? Oh, oh, hold on. There we go. Ah. That was scary. <laughs> I was fucking losing my balance big time. Are you not on it yet? Oh fuck, I think you had the light fight, you bastard. <laughs> That got stressful for a second. That pre-treater is huge and heavy and awkward, and I almost lost it. Anyways, now it's time for my favorite part. Cue the B-roll montage. All right, so the first thing that I gotta say, the aesthetic of these machines, oh, so good. As mentioned, we are running with the TextJet Echo 2. Super sick little machine. This thing has the smallest print droplet size in its class, so we can get really detailed with stuff. It also has the largest print area in its class, or one of the largest, so you can do some kind of semi all over prints, which definitely something I wanna check out. I think that'll be pretty cool. It also has an automatic platen height adjustment, so no need to worry about any of that. The machine takes care of the work, and the platens, they're quick change, they're on there with magnets, so that's a pretty neat little feature. And then probably the biggest selling feature on this thing, at least for me, is the maintenance. Maintenance cycles on DTG printers are kind of insane. They blow through a shitload of ink, which costs a lot of money. I know quite a few people who have DTG printers who aren't happy with the maintenance cycles on them because it's kind of crazy with some of the machines. You can actually search that topic on YouTube and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. These machines though, they can remain idle for like 30 days or something like that without needing any maintenance. That sounds kind of insane to me. So if that's actually true, that's a really big cost savings on ink for the people that run these things. And believe me, we're definitely gonna test that out. And this thing has the capability to do DTF printing, which no matter how hilarious that fucking acronym is, DTF has kind of taken the industry by storm over the last couple of years. So it's gonna be really awesome to have that capability at my fingertips. And that's something we are definitely gonna test heavily on this machine. I mean, come on. Whoever named that, did they not stop and think for like five seconds before calling it DTF? Or did they maybe do it on purpose? If that's the case, then you may be kind of a legend. Moving on though, we also have the Pre-Treater Pro. This thing just looks incredible. The all blacked out look is just so good. Obviously you guys know that's kind of my deal. There's also some really cool blue lights in this thing that match the logos. Like this is one really big one here. And I saw one that was flashing inside of this window. It looked amazing. So Polyprint, I know you're watching this right now. Your next generation of printers, make them look like this. Add the black, the blue lights, all that stuff. Trust me on this. But this thing is gonna add a huge level of efficiency and consistency to this whole DTG operation that we've got going on here now. When I decided to get into DTG and take this whole project on, the first thing that I said was, there is no way you're gonna catch my ass manually pre-treating shirts with a roller. It just was not gonna happen. So with this beauty, I don't gotta worry about that. This thing can hold multiple pre-treat solutions to kind of speed up your workflow. It's also got this really cool touchscreen interface here that has a bunch of presets in there. You can also create and edit your own. It has full edge to edge coverage in the spray area here. And probably the coolest thing about this thing is that it's really smart. You can set it up to spray exactly where you want it to. So let's say you've got a really weird print design where you've got a left chest print area up here and maybe one down here by the hip. You can set this machine up to spray only those areas and it knows how to do that. And you can save that as a preset later on for future use. So 
That's pretty awesome. Obviously, we're gonna get way more into these machines and what they can do, but we're gonna do that in some future videos when we fire them up for the first time. But I wanna take off my sponsored guy hat for a minute here and give you guys my opinion on this whole situation so far. I think most of you regulars know that I would never bullshit you or steer you in the wrong direction. I gotta say, I am thoroughly impressed with pretty much everything so far. First thing that I look for is build quality because as soon as I unbox new equipment, my mechanic's brain takes over and I start judging the crap out of everything. And I really couldn't find anything wrong with my initial impression of these machines. They look rock solid. Obviously that's yet to be determined once I start running these things and putting them through their paces, but so far just fit and finish of the builds themselves, really good. The only thing that I've found so far that I didn't like, which really isn't an actual problem, is the stand for the pre-treater. Now this stand is labeled as a universal stand and that's why this isn't a problem because universal means it should work with most things. But both of these stands have these little routed pockets for the feet of the machines to sit in so that they don't twist or move around on them. The stand that is made and dedicated for the printer, the printer drops straight into those holes, everything's clean, easy peasy. The stand that the pre-treater is on, however, it doesn't line up with those holes at all. I measured them out and those holes are also routed for a printer to sit into, but there's already a printer stand. So I kind of feel like this stand should have been set up for the pre-treater to sit into properly or just make a dedicated pre-treater stand. Like I said though, it is a universal stand, so it's not really made for this thing, but that would have been a really nice added touch. Another thing that I really like is the use of magnets on these things. I freaking love magnets. I think they're the best thing ever. Anytime you can implement a magnet in something, it usually makes it better. There's of course the quick change platen system. That's all done with magnets. It feels super secure, but also very quick and easy to use at the same time. All of the access doors on the machines, those are all done with magnets. So they have a really nice tactile feel to them, which is something that, I don't know, my brain just kind of likes. And even down to the tiniest little detail, this is the USB drive that has CadLink on it, which is the RIP software that ships with this machine. Even that's got a magnet, like, come on. And lastly, this part might not be that important to many of you, but it definitely is to me because I'm a nerd for the details. The shipping materials and all of the packaging of this stuff was top notch, man. Easily the best unboxing experience I've ever had in any aspect of this industry, period. These machines were packaged so well, it was unreal. Super dense foam everywhere. There was particle board protecting everything. Even all the materials used to package the stuff, like the wood and the screws, mega high quality stuff. Like it was no joke. I was actually feeling kind of bad as I was taking it apart. Usually I rip through these crates like a fucking barbarian, <laughs> but these things I was taking my time. It was, it was a whole different experience than I'm used to. Then once I got past the shipping materials and into the branded packaging, everything was just super nicely done, laid out clean, even down to the little details, like the instructions for putting these stands together. That's not something you'd typically see someone put a lot of thought and effort into. Well, they definitely did because not only were they designed very well visually, but they were also printed on this glossy, thick, really nice paper stock. Kind of made a high-end magazine look like a piece of crap. <laughs> Ikea could definitely take notes from Polyprint. Anyways, going through all of that stuff, you could really tell that they care a lot about the details. And that means a lot to me because that's what we're all about here. So that made me feel really good about moving forward with these machines. Now, I'm sure a few people are probably wondering my thoughts on the whole DTG versus screen printing thing because I'm a screen printer and that's obviously a very popular topic in our industry. We are going to get very deep into that conversation because I feel like there's a lot of garbage information about it on YouTube and I feel like I have a lot to say about it, but we're not doing it in this video because I don't want it to be two hours long. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we're gonna do a lot of DTG versus screen printing stuff now that we got the capabilities to do all of it. Anyways, I just ordered a pizza that I wanna smash into my gut right now. So that's gonna be the end of this video. Thank you again to Polyprint. Thank you guys for watching. Please hit the thumbs up button for me and we'll see you again in the next shop build video. Yeah, check out that movie magic. Got some high budget stuff going on here. Boy, your little back just cracked. <laughs> you are right in the way. Uh, breakfast sausage. <laughs> little asshole. Now, I'm sure a few people are probably wondering. Oh, those fucking greats. How's it going? I look like shit today, yeah. Are you a real estate agent? Because I'm trying to make a move here. <laughs>